14 billion dollars were spent on the presidential and congressional elections of 2020. 14 billion dollars. Think about that. 14 billion dollars. Of that, 6.6 .6 billion dollars were spent on the presidential election. 6.6 .6 billion dollars to become the president of the United States. Another 800 million dollars were spent on the two Georgia Senate races that determine the Senate majority. 800 million dollars on two Senate races. These numbers are too big for me to comprehend. I'm a high school student. I deal in the world of five dollar Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes and three dollar dice for my weekly Dungeons and Dragons game. But the decisions that politicians are making right now affect me in so many ways. For example, look at climate change. What will the world be like in 50 years if we don't address climate change successfully? I don't know, but I'm confident that if I don't die of old age, I'll probably die from climate change. So where's the connection between these two things? Well, let's look back at the 2020 presidential election again. Former President Trump received over $3 million in contributions from the fossil fuel industry, while President Biden only received $1.5 million. Would those $3 million not encourage former President Trump to continue his deregulation of the fossil fuel industry? And would the $1.5 million that President Biden received not, con not encourage him to perhaps not go quite so far with his regulations? But is money that important to politicians, though? Is it really influencing their decision? Well, I think the fact that they accept so much money is good evidence in and of itself. But also in 2020, in over 87% of House races and over 71% of Senate races, the higher spending candidate won. Additionally, look at a typical schedule for a member of Congress. Normally, a member of Congress spends about two hours in committee or on the floor making laws, about one to two hours for visits with voters, and about an hour for strategic outreach, like planning fundraising events and such. The only other thing on a member of Congress's schedule is four to five hours of call time, where they call with wealthy donors and ask them for money. Members of Congress spend two to four times the amount of time on the phone with wealthy donors who may not even live in their district than they do with their real constituents. At that point, they no longer represent the people. So how did we get to this point? The point where I, a 16 year old who can't even vote, has to think about how I might get killed by government inaction. Unfortunately, that's not a simple question. There are numerous factors that have led to the awful campaign finance system we have today. The most clear answer is the Citizens United Supreme Court case. Now, I have a lot to say about Citizens United, more than I have to say about Nix versus Hedden, which ruled that the tomato is a vegetable, and I have a lot to say about Nix versus Hedden. But to summarize Citizens United quickly, the Supreme Court said that corporations have a right to free speech, and that supposedly to restrict campaign donations would be to restrict free speech. This meant that corporations could spend an unlimited amount of money on campaign advertisements so long as they didn't formally coordinate with a political campaign or political party. Then, in the 2010 case SpeechNow.org versus the FEC, a federal appeals court used the Citizens United decision to say that outside groups could take unlimited contributions from individual donors and corporations so long as they didn't give directly to campaigns. These groups are called super PACs. Super PACs do have to disclose their donors, but their donors are sometimes dark money groups which don't have to disclose their donors. From 2010 to 2018, super PACs contributed approximately $2.9 billion towards, towards federal elections. To summarize, wealthy donors can indirectly but anonymously give unlimited amounts of money towards political campaigns. That's how we bribe a politician. But what have the effects been? Well, conservatives could point to policies passed by liberals, and liberals could point to policies passed by conservatives, but I would point to the fact that 
Congress's approval rating hasn't been above 30% in 10 years. The most recent Gallup poll found that only 15% of Americans approve of Congress. 15%! Think about that. 15%. Only 15% of Americans approve of the politicians that they themselves elected. This isn't a partisan issue. We all agree that our government is failing us. So what can we do? Well, to answer that, first we need to look at the possible solutions. Ideally, we could have publicly financed campaigns. Each level of campaign, presidential, congressional, all the way down to city council, would have a certain budget and that's it. No campaign contributions at all. This completely removes money from the equation, making a political campaign all about convincing the voters that you will serve them the best. Unfortunately, this is a long way off for the US. Instead, I believe there are three solutions that we can pursue in the short term. The first is to either overturn Citizens United or pass the bipartisan proposed Democracy for All Amendment, which affirms the rights of states and the federal government to regulate spending in elections. Second, we could pass democracy voucher programs. These programs give every registered voter about $100 to spend on any elections they choose. Not only would this drastically increase voter participation, it would also help to level the playing field. And finally, we need to lower the individual contribution limit from $2,800 to $500, leveling the playing field even more. So let's go back to our question. What can we do? Well, the number one thing is to get involved. Join a group or start a group that's pushing for these policies. Go call your representatives. If they don't listen, help elect representatives who will. Call your state representatives, call your city council, call your, your board of education, call your neighbors and tell them to call their representatives. Call me, I'll tell you more about this. In all seriousness, it's time to take back our democracy. And I don't mean for a party, I mean for the people.